ഹലോ ഗുഡ് ആഫ്റ്റർനൂൺ സോ നൗ വി ആർ ഇൻ ദ ഇറ ഓഫ് കോവിഡ് നയൻറ്റീൻ വി ആർ ഓൾ കൺസേൺഡ് അബൌട്ട് ദിസ് കോവിഡ് നയൻറ്റീൻ വൈ വി ആർ കൺസേൺഡ് വി ആർ കൺസേൺഡ് അബൌട്ട് ദിസ് കോവിഡ് മെയിൻലി ബിക്കോസ് ഓഫ് ദ ആബ്സെൻസ് ഓഫ് എ വാക്സിൻ ആൻഡ് ആൾസോ ഡ്യൂ ടു ആബ്സെൻസ് ഓഫ് എ പ്രോപ്പർ ഡ്രഗ് എഗൻസ്റ്റ് ദിസ് കോവിഡ് so so the need of the hour is vaccines so today my topic is newer vaccines you know that smallpox is not there in this world polio is near eradication mainly because of vaccines so vaccines are the most important uh, tool to prevent the disease in this world so it is a corona virus that causing havoc why we are scared as said earlier there are there are no vaccine there is no vaccine against covid innumerable cases of dengue fever but death following covid is nearing 2 lakhs so this is a staff reporter from the hindu and also you know that earth is a village it's a global village any disease anywhere it is everywhere so this is a report from a hindu so with the exception of safe water no other modality has had such a major effect on the mortality reduction there comes the importance of the vaccine you know that uh, the government of india is giving national immunization schedule so what are the vaccines that is covered under the national immunization schedule that is at birth bcg hepatitis b birth dose and zero dose of oral polio vaccination then at the 6th week we give pendavac rotavirus vaccination and fractional dose of ipv and opv 10th week pendavac 2 opv 2 rota 2 there is no ipv at the 10th week and 14 weeks again penda 3 opv 3 rota 3 and fractional ipv 2 9th month we give measles containing vaccination 15th month again measles containing vaccinations and 18th month a booster dose of dpt and opv and for and a half years to 5 years we give dpt booster dose 2 and then and the 10th year tetanus toxoid bar td so this is the national immunization schedule but in addition to this we have to give non nis vaccinations that means vaccines not covered uh, under national immunization schedule let us see uh, what are the non nis vaccination so in this we are mainly giving new vaccines for example in the 16 and 14 weeks in addition to the nis vaccines we give conjugated pneumococcal vaccination this is known as pcv three doses are given at the age of 6 10 and 14 weeks and then at the sixth month we can prevent typhoid vaccine by giving conjugated typhoid vaccinations and in addition we can give, start giving influenza from 6 months onwards and ninth month we give vaccine against meningococcal disease that is known as mcv1 12th month we can give vaccine against hepatitis a and second dose of meningococcal vaccinations and je vaccinations in certain districts where je is very common in kerala you know that we are giving je vaccinations in trivandrum and alappi district and 13th month you have to give one more dose of je that is known as je2 15th month in addition to the measles containing vaccinations you have to give the booster dose of prevenar and also first dose of varicella varicella against chicken pox and 18th month we can give the booster dose of h influenza type b vaccinations and second dose of hepatitis a vaccination and 5 years you have to give in addition to dpt and opv uh, booster we have to give varicella and second dose of third dose of mmr so 10th year we had to give tdap instead of giving tt in the national immunization schedule we are giving tdap tdap is tetanus toxoid and plus adolescent dose of diphtheria and acella pertussis vaccination in addition to human papilloma virus vaccination you know these two human papilloma virus and hepatitis b vaccination are cancer preventable vaccinations so you have to give second dose of hpv uh six months after uh, the first dose in children less than 15 years but if you are not vaccinated against hepatitis sorry human papilloma virus before 15 years of age or if the person is immunocompromised the schedule is to give 
uh, at the age of zero dose and then two months and six months later. And this is, there are two types of vaccinations that I will come to that later, quadrivalent and bivalent. First, I will discuss about rotavirus vaccination. So, rotavirus is the most important cause of diarrhea, viral diarrhea in children less than one year. So, it is an F FDA approved vaccinations. There are so many types of vaccines are there, Rotatec, Rotarix and Rotavac. In our hospital at Amrita, we are giving Rotavac. So, what is the schedule? Schedule is to give uh, first dose, second dose and third dose along with the Pendavac at 6, 10 and 14 weeks. And then anyway, it has to be given before for 32 weeks. If you prolong to uh, after 32 weeks, there is chance for complications or we are not advising rotavirus vaccination um, after the uh, age of 32 weeks. So from studies, we know that there is 60 percent reduction of diarrhea illness uh, as per Nicaraguan study and 65 percent reduction in Mexico and also 86 percent reduction of diarrhea disorders in young children in United States. So negligible side effects and uh, is rather safe. Precautions not after 15 weeks, always before 32 weeks. No, not we are not giving these vaccinations in immunosuppressed uh, or patient persons who had anaphylaxis in the past, and uh, the six weeks gap after blood or blood products, and preferable uh, is preferable, but it's not an absolute contraindication. So previous gastrointestinal infections or other illness is not a contraindication for giving rotavirus vaccination. So rare complication of intersusception as I said earlier if it gives after 32 weeks of age. Another important vaccine that you have a new vaccine is ACL protest vaccination. So conventional vaccination that we are giving in Pendavac is capital D, capital P, capital T. But SLA pertussis means uh, that contains uh, the certain components are not there. So because of this, the whole cell pertussis is not there. As a result, there is decreased or reduced local reaction, tenderness, erythema and fever. And there is less irritability and drowsiness. Higher immunity to pertussis toxoid, filamentous hemoglobinin and pertactin are the substances present in the, this uh, vaccine. Significantly less reactogenicity, that is the point that we have to highlight compared to whole cell pertussis vaccination. No persistent crying, no uh, HHE, uh, hypotonia, hyperresponsive encephalopathy, less chance for convulsions, febrile or febrile convulsions if you are using um, this SLR pertussis vaccine. It is very safe and um, but if child develops a prolonged crying at any cause uh, in the last dose, it is a contraindication to give this vaccination. So the classical vaccination is Tdap. So better to give Tdap at the age of 10th year rather than TT or TD because this covers pertussis also. If we know that, you have to know that adolescent pertussis is a very common thing. So this Tdap contains detoxified pertussis toxin 2.5 microgram, filamentous hemoglobin 5 microgram and pertactin 3 microgram and full beer types 2 and 3. So in addition contains tetanus toxoid and diphtheria toxoid. So precautions uh, in case of any vaccination of uh, uh, containing pertussis, anaphylaxis last time, no pertussis component in any form you have to give. So if patient had GBS uh, or who had GBS within 8 weeks, uh, better to give capital DTAP. That precautions you have to take. And progressive neurological illness is a contraindication for giving DPT vaccination. Then comes frac fractional dose of IPV. So 48 and 32 D antigen units are present of type 1 and type 2 and type 3. Seroconversion is 100% unlike oral polio vaccination. So that's why in the near future we are going to change to uh, IPV rather than OPV. So combination with other vaccines are also possible. So there is mucosal immunity even if you are giving this vaccine either intradermally or intramuscularly because of the spillover. So now as for the schedule, we are giving the vaccine at 6 and 14 weeks intradermally. Another important vaccine that uh, we have to uh, give to our children is vaccine against hepatitis A. Like hepatitis B, hepatitis A also can cause problem, but not as severe as hepatitis B. So we use inactivated whole cell vaccine, that means 720 international unit for children less than 18 years and 1440 international unit for children more than 18 years. So 95% protection if you take one dose and there is 100% protection if you take two doses. All Kerala adolescents must be vaccinated against hepatitis A at the age of 
12th and 18th month. So we in our hospital we are giving um, single dose live hepatitis C vaccination that's actually a Chinese vaccine but that has to be given only once. Uh, but you know that combined hepatitis A and B vaccines are also available in some countries at the, and that we are giving at the age of 0 to 1, 6 uh, or at the age of 0 and 6 months. And another important vaccine that uh, we have to promote and propagate is vaccine against human papilloma virus vaccination. So human papilloma virus is the vac a virus that is responsible for cervical cancer. 36, 36 people out of 100,000 females develop CS cervix. So of this serotypes 16 and 18 is the one most important that cause 76 percent of cervical cancers. So infection disease duration is very long. So if you get an infection after 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years you may develop uh, cervical uh, carcinoma. So 50 to 80 percent of all sexually active women accrue HPV infections of which 50 percent are with the oncogenic strains. What is the age group that is at high risk? 16 to 25 years is the high risk group. So bivalent Cervarex that is given at 0.16 and quadrivalent Gardasil 0 and 2 6 months is the schedule. It's given IM deltoid. So Gardasil have additional benefit in the in men in the sense that it is helpful to prevent anal wards and also anal carcinoma. So there is a role for vaccine in men and women. So already said earlier 11 to 68, 26 years the age group but you can give this vaccine as early as 9 years. Up to 45 years you can give if person is immunocompromised. Less than 15 years Gardasil is a 9, Gardasil 9 that is a 9 violent vaccination 2 dose schedule at 0 and next, next, next dose at 6 to 12 months. Less, more than 15 years schedule is 0 first month and six month. So missed doses need not be repeated. So another important uh, vaccine that we have to promote in our country is vaccine against influenza. Influenza is very common in our country just before monsoon. So that means around after second half of May or early June, influenza is an epidemic in Kerala. And the strain is H1N1 and H3N2 and influenza B. The vaccine that we use is live attenuated and kill vaccines. Live attenuated vaccinations are not indicated in children less than two years and pregnant women. You have to use kill vaccinations. Immunocompromised and other populations you can use inactivated vaccination. So healthy children two to now for 50 years you can use live vaccinations. They can also get inactivated vaccinations. Six months to nine years, two doses for the first time and then only one dose yearly. So if you have taken two doses only for the first dose, second time onwards you have to give only one dose. Less than three years the dose is 0 0.25 ml or 0.5 ml but more than uh, nine years, sorry, more than three years you can take 0.5 ml. So that's a mistake, you can give more than three years you, to, you can give 0.5 ml. And you have to repeat this vaccine every year. So that's a problem. So this is a schedule. I can see that uh, 6 to uh, 35 months 0.25 ml, 1 or 2 doses, 3 to 8 years 0.5 ml, more than 9 years 0.5 ml. So what are the indications? Ideally all children should get vaccine against influenza but high risk populations are chronic kidney disease, chronic pulmonary disease, chronic liver disorders, people with the sickle cell, immunosuppressive patients, HIV patients, metabolic disorders, long-term aspirin therapy and asthma recurring oral steroids. And so another important new vaccine is varicella vaccination. First dose is given at the age of 15th month, second dose at 5 years of age or any time after 3 months you can give this second dose. 90% protection if given within 3 days of contact. If your friend has varicella, you can take this vaccination within 3 days, there is 90% protection. But if you are taking after 5 days, the protection is limited to 70%. And people with the HIV, if the CD4 count is more than 15%, they can also take these vaccinations. And nephrotic syndrome patients in remission or uh, for more than 14 days when they are getting less than 2 mg per kg of prednisolone, these people can also take vaccine against varicella. It's a very useful vaccination to prevent. Uh, this very seldom. So another important vaccine is uh, IDRV, intradermal rabies vaccination. 0 0.1 ml, two doses given at 0, 3, 7, 28 and 30 days. 
you, you can also give uh, RIG or immunoglobulin in class 3 bites and 20 units per kg, maximum 1500 international units to be infiltrated locally only for the first days. There is no point in giving this after the seventh days, seven days. Leftover may be injected intramuscularly. Pre-exposure prophylaxis, we can use this vaccine 0, 7 and 28 days. So re-exposure 0 and 3rd day, those no RIG. Antibody response is 0 0.5 intranational unit per ml. If less than this, booster is advisable or booster every 5 years. So cholera vaccinations we are not promoting routinely but people who are at, uh, going to high risk places like uh, uh, in K uh, Tamil Nadu uh, for example they are visiting Palani or Velankani used to give vaccine against cholera vaccine. So typhoid vaccination is a typhoid is an important condition in a country even now. Any child uh, if you are visiting for more than 5 days. In addition to EB virus infection, you have to consider typhoid as a possibility. So now you can prevent typhoid by giving a vaccine against typhoid at the age as early as six months. So this is known as conjugated typhoid vaccine. So is lifelong immunity is there, one need not repeat this vaccination again and again, unlike the older vaccination. So as I said earlier, Japanese sensibilities. So the strain that we use is SA 14-14-2 given at the age of 12th and 13th month. 1 to 15 years in our country, we are giving in Alipi and uh, 200 district given IM. 98% protection is very safe and efficacy lasts for 5 years. So meningococcal vaccination. So meningococcal vaccine is not, we are not giving routinely, but we are giving to high risk population that is with uh, asplenia, complement deficiency, adolescents staying in dormitories, uh, Hajj pilgrimage, military recruits. So all these people need meningococcal vaccination. The name of the vaccine is Menactra. So it's a quadrivalent vaccination, ACYW135. Uh, bivalent vaccine is also available. Uh, at uh, AC for domestic use, adolescents vaccinated at 10 to 15, 12 years may need a booster dose uh, at the age of 16 years. So, in yellow fever vaccine is another important vaccination that can give is if a person with influenza like illness may lead to hepatitis and hemorrhagic fever. Seven D, D strains uh, is there and it can produce encephalitis and uh, disruptive disease and uh, adverse reactions are less but that is not common we only uh, to we are giving only to people visiting africa um, but if somebody is coming and uh, to india and is not vaccinated they need quarantine for five days so another important vaccination that uh, is step pneumo vaccine so step pneumo is the cause for meningitis and pneumonia in the post pandemic era in children after three months and up to five years and even after five years, step pneumo infection is very common. So it's our duty to uh, prevent this step, step pneumo by giving vaccine against step pneumo for all children up to five years. Now we are extended the vaccine up to 18 years. So the schedule is so six weeks, 10 weeks and 14 weeks and a booster at a 15th month. So the vaccine that we are using or promoting is vaccine that contains 13 valent strain that is known as PCB13. So this vaccine is very effective in children to prevent meningitis and uh, pneumonia. For children, it's our duty to inform about these vaccinations and document that you have advised this vaccination vaccines against uh, these diseases. So, uh, so this is all about newer vaccines in children.